We've gotten into the habit of fixing video cards lately, a sad necessity in an era plagued with incomplete, penny-pinching designs that overlook the basics, like screw tension, cold plate levelness, and using thermal pads that are about 60% smaller than they should be. MSI's RX 5700 XT Evoco C is the newest in this growing list of cards that any user can fix, unfortunately, and it's for reasons we illustrated best in our teardown of the card. Our testing illustrated that its cooling capabilities are subpar when compared to the Sapphire Pulse, and not only that, but the memory temperatures are concerningly high when noise normalized in our benchmarks. Today we're fixing that with properly sized thermal pads. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So as a reminder of what happened, we took the card apart and found that the thermal pads are about that size, which is about 40% of a memory module. Uh, so it's not making full contact. And so the plate is big enough on the top for the memory modules and on the right side for the modules near the VRM. The left side though, it is actually too short by uh, maybe about one to two millimeters, but the rest of them are the right size. So they could widen the left part of the cold plate, but as you'll see in the testing, even that's not fully necessary. It's just the thermal pads that really matter. Pretty simple fix. We took those pads off, put bigger ones on. They are two millimeters thick, the ones that MSI uses on there. So we used also two mil thick pads. We used the minus eight pads from Thermal Grizzly and then just cut them to size pretty easy to do, made them exactly the size of the memory module, so there's no fitness issues. And then beyond that, uh, just a, a reminder here that this card is about $430 MSRP if it sticks to the pricing we were told. And if that ends up being the price, then getting a 40% size thermal pad kind of feels bad, especially because the Sapphire Pulse can do it without any issues at all. So. Uh, anyway, the fix is about $12 if you buy the thermal pads retail like any user would have to. And just a reminder for testing, if you did do this yourself and wanted to validate it, do tests beforehand, stuff like that, you can't just run the test by sticking the card into a machine and then playing a game or running some random benchmark. It's not good enough. It needs to be controlled. So every fan in the system has to be controlled. Uh, you need to ideally control or at least know your ambient temperature. And then stuff like GPU fans especially need to be controlled. So while it's nice to run this auto out of box, if the temperatures change, then the fan speeds might change to hit the different temperature targets that are set on the card. Uh, so we do all of this mostly by testing for noise normalized thermals. We set the cards all to 40 dBA, see who performs the best. It shows us an efficiency of the cooler. We also test stock just to see how it does. And uh, further, we control the fan speeds tested in an open air bench. We know the ambient temperature is about 21 degrees Celsius in our environment, and we maintain that temperature. So uh, also we do power logging going into the GPU so we know how much power is fed into the card because that's a bit variable with the software as well and can change run to run. So all of that's dated. Let's go through some of the numbers. We'll put a reminder chart on the screen first. In the original testing, we saw the MSI Evoke OC card performing relatively poorly in memory and MOSFET temperatures. And this is, again, the original chart when compared to the Pulse card. So left auto and controlled by itself, which is actually more aggressive than the noise normalized fan controlled tests, not even with reduced fan speeds. The Evoke still struggled with memory temperature at 90.5 degrees Celsius, which is approaching uncomfortable territory for GDDR6 inside a hotter case or in a higher ambient temperature environment. Again, we were 21C in open air. You'd easily push that higher. It's not uncommon for a case ambient temperature to be in the 30 to 35 range if you have a decently cooled room. GPU thermals were fine when everything was auto-controlled, but MSI runs louder here than either of Sapphire's profiles and also has a more aggressive GPU temperature target. The cooler, though, is inefficient as it doesn't cool everything properly and only cools the GPU. Getting into the new chart, we're sorting by memory temperature first, as this was most directly affected. The MOSFETs can take much higher temperatures, approaching and sometimes surpassing 125 degrees Celsius, and 
because of that, it's of no real consequence here. We're not worried about it. None of the MOSFETs are hot enough to matter. That said, we still saw some VRM thermal improvement in the sensors, moving from 81 degrees to 78.3 degrees. This small shift isn't surprising when considering the proximity of GDDR6 memory to the MOSFETs measured, and pulling heat away from that section of the PCB more efficiently can have a knock-on effect for the MOSFET, though not much of one. The memory is what we really changed. For this, with a fixed and controlled fan speed of about 1750 RPM, the same as we used last time with a noise normalized target of 40 dBA, we end up at 80 degrees for the new result. This is not only a massive reduction of about 15 degrees from the MSI Evoke original results, 94.8 degrees Celsius, but also a jump to the top of the chart. We're near error to the pulse at the same RPM, although the pulse maintains an advantage in VRM cooling from its isolated cooling plates, and that matters much less than GPU and memory thermals, but it seems that our $12 mod has paid off here. By the way, that $12, that's cost for the consumer for buying a few memory modules worth of thermal pads, enough for one video card. We're gonna put some footage on the screen of MSI's China-based factory momentarily. Hopefully, this is helpful in demonstrating that this isn't some small company that needs to save money. MSI told us when we toured the factories that it manufactures 1.6 million motherboards per month and 1 million video cards per month out of this factory. And again, that's, that's one facility. The price breaks and economies of scale for a company which needs millions of units worth of thermal pads per month have to be enormous when compared to you buying from Amazon <laughs> for a set of pads that's enough for one video card. So you, the consumer, you're paying Amazon's listing fees because the seller will pay that, so it gets passed on to you. You're paying multiple shipment payments from the factory to wherever the QC or distribution hub is to Amazon to you, and you're also paying the manufacturer's margins because they need to make money too. The point of all of this is to highlight that MSI cut a few thermal pads to about 40% of their necessary size to save what was probably a few pennies worth of material at the factory level, if not fractions thereof. Fixing this problem wouldn't affect the retail price. This can fit within the margins easily. Even if you multiply this across maybe thousands of Evoke cards, that just doesn't seem like it'd save an amount of money that's worth reputation damage. And again, they're buying enough pads for millions of devices anyway. This isn't a cheap card either. It's more expensive than the Pulse and includes less cooling hardware on the PCB. It's completely possible that this was a mistake by MSI and that the PMs and engineers didn't know about the decisions made at the factory. We don't know what the deal is. We hear about it all the time, though, and it's unfortunate when good design is uh, backstabbed by bad execution or overly aggressive savings or something like that. But MSI does own the factory, so ultimately they're responsible, even though we don't know which department specifically is at fault. So you could basically fix the card with a thermal pad purchase. You can get them for cheap if you bought a cheaper package. The minus eight pads are something like maybe $12, $11, $12 if you buy an amount that's good enough to fit this card and that's it. And we'll link one below if you do happen to buy the card and you want to fix it. It's just that it's, it's really unfortunate that this is something a user should have to do anyway, because again, it's, it's expensive enough that if, it just looks bad because again, I've got the Sapphire Pulse next to me. Those are the thermal pads on it. That's the size of a GDDR6 module. It's about exactly one of those thermal pads. They're pretty cut to size. This is the size of an MSI's thermal pad. And here's the bigger problem. The pads where MSI positioned them uh, are not centered. And the hottest spot of a memory module is going to be the middle because that's where the silicon is. It's where the silicon's the hottest, too. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a, a matter of wrong size pad, bad placement of the pad, and then we don't know how good the quality of them is in terms of thermal conductivity, but at the end of the day, it's sort of irrelevant if they're not really placed in the right place. Anyway, so here's what, I guess, what we think about this. If you bought the card because it's the only one available because 5700 XTs were hard to find for a few weeks and still kind of are, then you don't have to feel too bad about it. You can fix it. You take it apart. It's got a warranty void if removed sticker on it. Uh, in the US, those are illegal and unenforceable, so you can ignore it and do whatever you want. Just don't break the card, but you probably won't. Take a few screws out and replace the thermal pads. Easy enough. No real danger there. Replace the thermal paste while you're at it because it'll be exposed to air and you'll pull it apart so it's not going to line up anymore anyway. And then if you're not in the US and those stickers are enforceable, well, don't remove the sticker 
And my suggestion would be to get uh, like some gentle uh, like needle nose pliers and don't grip it too hard. Grab around the edge of the screw and then twist it out because then you're not removing or damaging the stupid warranty sticker and there's no evidence that you've tampered with it. And then if you have to return it for some reason, just put the old pads on. And I don't feel bad about saying that because MSI screwed up anyway. So that's the way to do it. Um, you could always add a small washer while you're at it. We actually added some washers for, uh, for contact reasons. So when you take this apart, make sure a few things. Make sure the thermal pads are cut exactly to size. If they're too big and they hit, like go over other components, you might have clearance issues getting the cooler back on. And then separately, uh, check your junction temperatures when you plug it back in and run it in the system. If junction is really high or the delta between GPU and junction, you can use GPZ for this, is greater than maybe say 20, 30 degrees, probably ideally closer to 20, then there might be a problem. So uh, we had to redo this mod once because when reassembling the car, the junction temperature skyrocketed, and that's because there wasn't proper contact on the GPU silicon, even though the memory contact was fixed. And that's just a matter of mounting tension, screw tension, make sure everything's torqued down. And then if you do add washers to increase the pressure, be careful to not increase it too much to a point where you can crack the silicon because that can happen. Uh, ideally do it without the extra washers, but if you add them, get skinny plastic ones. That way, one, they're not too thick, and two, you probably break the plastic before anything else. So that's it. Um, it's a fixable problem. All that said, we can't really recommend buying the card even though it can be fixed because of a few things. One is we want to see MSI fix this at the factory level where it costs pennies max rather than at the consumer level where it costs $12. Although the minus eight pads are worth it, you still shouldn't have to buy them for this. Uh, separately, the company shouldn't be rewarded with purchases from people who are planning to immediately fix the product. That sets a bad precedent for them. And then finally, it's, it's worth just getting an alternative anyway, like the Sapphire one that just comes out of the box ready to use. No issues at all. We liked how this one cooled. Um, so the only reason to really buy this is if you can't get a better one in your region. And if that's the case, then buy this and some thermal pads at the same time and fix the problem. And that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. MSI reached out to us and asked for uh, thermal data when we originally ran the testing. And we basically said, well, I mean, here's a picture of the thermal pads. What's the issue? And they're looking into it. So hopefully they fix this. But uh, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus or store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. If you'd like to buy a shirt like this one or one of our mod mats to work on your video card or a toolkit to work on your video card. And uh, I'll also link some thermal pads below that will be the, the right amount of surface area that you can cut to however many memory modules are on the, uh, the average card. So that'll be it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.